This is the plaintiff, Teresa Brooks. She says she worked for the defendant when he ran his summer youth basketball camp, laid out money for him renting a van, and the guy won't pay her back. She went above and beyond helping this man out. He blames everything and everyone for not paying her what she's due. And she's here seeking the $10,000 she's owed. This is the defendant, Giovanni Gardner. He says he played professional basketball in France and brought a bunch of French basketball players to the States to play with some local kids. The plaintiff's son signed up for the camp, and the money the plaintiff spent on a van wasn't his responsibility. She did it to help out with the kids. This woman's caused him so much stress and anxiety, he's the one who's owed today, not her. He's accused of not reimbursing a mom. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the dock, the plaintiff worked at the defendant's summer youth basketball camp and says that she got stiffed when she ran in him a van, but the defendant says that she did what she did to help the kids. It's the case of a tisket, a tasket. I'm suing you over the basket. Thank you, Douglas. Teresa Brooks, you are suing Jelani Gardner for $10,000 that you say he owes you in expenses as well as stress and aggravation because he won't pay you money you say he owes you. All right. <laughs> Go ahead, what happened? Um, in July of 2016, I um, helped the defendant uh, with his uh, youth basketball. He brought uh, approximately 28 um, kids from Paris, France. Oh, okay, let me hear from you. Tell me about that program. What, how did that come about? Well, um, playing professional basketball in France, we developed some relationships. We wanted to uh, intertwine the United States and the European kids. We brought 29 kids from Who's we? my organization, okay. my youth organization. Are you the owner? Yes. Okay. I have a youth organization where we AAU basketball, kids 8 to 14, play uh, travel basketball over, all over the United States. Uh, we wanted to intertwine the European kids with the American kids. We brought 29 kids from Paris to America. Uh, kids between the ages of 8 and 14? Yes. Oh, I said, well, how awesome for them. And, okay, it was, it go on. And experience. awesome for the kids here, too. Did your program have American kids also? Yes. We so have they a, got to, you know. They created relationships. Where did the kids live? They stayed with host families that families did, Were from you my, a host family? Yes, sir. Tell me what went wrong here that brings us to court. The van company needed to be paid their first initial uh, payment. Because a van needed to be rented. Right. Okay. And so I... What uh, kind of van was rented? Oh, uh, it was like... A passenger a six, van? Yeah, uh-huh. So a large fit passenger. how many people? Mm, maybe 12. Okay. And I drove the passenger van okay. also because for the kids. So um, I used my debit card, credit card to uh, Why? provide. Um, uh, when uh, Jelani and I were uh, having a conversation at the camp, it was that he didn't have the money for Who it didn't at the have time. The money? Jelani. And according to you, how does it happen that the van ends up being put on her credit card? This isn't her program. How did well, that happen? The French group, they paid 20% up front and they were supposed to make the, the rest of the payments on arrival. Okay, you may be a really good basketball player, but you are not a very good businessman. You did not get all of the money up front from them? Because... It was my first time running the camp. Uh, they sent 20% up front, and they were supposed to bring the rest with them. Because yeah, but once of taxes the kids are here, what are you going to do? Stick them all on the, under the freeway? I mean, well, we they a, know that. They were, they were personal friends, so I trust them. How'd that work out? It didn't work out well. Right. I learned because, a lesson. Exactly. So he seems to be saying to the judge, take into account, this is a youth camp, it's charitable. Is that any kind of a defense? No, it's not. Not if she was promised to be reimbursed for the van. So what's he up to? Why is he doing this? Uh, I think he's just trying to play the heartstrings to the judge and, and use the, uh, the camp as a good way to get out of, uh, of pain. Should that work? No. I think you're right, going inside the courtroom. So how much are you out as a result of this debacle? I lost uh, around $18,000. Because that's what th was owed to you by them? Yes. OK, but also they were supposed <clears throat> to pay for that van. Yes, we right. were. Now, these are your friends, your business deal with your program. You were supposed to get paid back? Yes, ma'am. And did you? No. OK, which brings us here. You're also suing for gas, parking, and photo books. Were you supposed to be reimbursed for the photo books, or is that something you were doing because you're a sweetheart? 
No, I um, I spoke with um, Jelani prior to um, getting making the them. making the books, and um, and he agreed. You know that we, we would, would be purchase them. And, All right. Yeah. All right, so um, Mr. Gardner, tell me, um, why am I here? Because it sounds to me like this is a you problem. Well, it's not, the responsibility is not mine because why not? the French organization agreed to pay her back. She offered to, to pay for the vans. I didn't offer or solicit her help. Did she speak with the French organization? Yes. Tell me about how it went down according to you. We were at the camp and we were all sitting there and the, the French leader was supposed to pay for the vans. He said that he had overexpended his credit card and he couldn't pay the vans and I was going to leave that responsibility on him I wasn't going to cover the vans because that was his responsibility written in the contract Teresa was there and said hey I'm here for a reason you know God has me here for a reason I can help and I didn't solicit her help and she made that deal with the leader of the French organization did you speak with the leader of the French organization and did it go down the way he's saying it was Jelani and I in the gym having this conversation. Was the French leader there? The discussion with the French leader was is that he would be paying Jelani because the whole organization and contract was with the French leader and Jelani. I was just a friend what, of Jelani. Did Jelani's. the French leader ever say he would pay you back separately? Yes. Um, the French leader uh, said that he would pay the organization, Jelani's Jag, and that they would then in person. Did the me. French leader ever tell you he was going to pay you back personally? Yes, also. I told him even then, like, I lent this because of my friendship and, you know, with Jelani. I didn't know him from Adam. So, you know, for me to just extend a loan to him, to right. me, is absurd. It sounds really like, stupid, like, right? Would, like, it that. sounds like not that like, best idea yeah, you've ever I don't had. Know even him. though you were trying to be sweet <clears throat> and magnanimous and you're so kind and you're so generous. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I now, was. Now, Mr. Really Gardner, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm slicing and dicing here and trying to figure out who said what to who and all that. But at the end of the day, aren't you the guy who struck the deal, who had the program, who should eat the bad apple here? Why is it that a so. mom who's trying to help out should be stuck with this? I appreciate what Teresa did to help us, but the agreement was made between her and the was French Was it really? Leader. Was yes, it really? All three of I us. mean, I understand that that person's supposed to pay her back, but all was it made on behalf of your little organization because the original deal was with your no, organization? I was going to leave. You the said that it was part of your deal with them that they were supposed to pay. They were supposed then the problem to pay. comes up, and then she offers to get. So maybe the way to look at this from an you know, the judge's perspective is she could collect against that guy and she could collect against you because it's all done on behalf of your program and you're standing there. It's not like it's done behind your back. It's all happening right in front of you, part and parcel with your discussions. I have emails stating the facts that she, that Mark agreed to pay her back. She made, when she agreed to pay those vans, Mark, the leader of the French organization, agreed to pay her back within a week. That's why she agreed to do it. It was never me paying her back. Let me see the emails you have. I want to see them. I expected it to be back in the, our bank account before my husband would be aware of the loss. That's what you <laughs> write to the French guy. Well. And you talk about the loan you made. And then on top of that, uh, Your Honor, um, the rental company went into my bank account because uh, Mr. Gardner didn't pay them the, the remaining balance. What remaining balance? Uh, of the van rental. There was Wait, the, why would why would he there was paid? two portions? So the portion that I initially um, helped pay for, and then he owed. They went into my bank account. I had to get my bank account uh, changed over to another one because they were trying to fraudulently take money from me. Why was that fraudulent? Didn't you sign a contract? No, I never told them. I only gave them the initial, and he even stated. Wait, stop! Like, Did you sign for the no, rental? No, sir. Who no, ma'am, I'm who sorry. Who signed for the rental? Apparently, there was nothing. He also said it was I'm sorry. just... sorry. Who signed the, the contract with the rental company? I am asking that question. No one. No one? How can that be? I'm it's... asking you now, because I'm staring right at you, so I think you know. <laughs> who signed the rental agreement for the van? I would imagine it was me. She wouldn't have agreed to You're pay. not out of this, Jelani. You're not. She wouldn't have agreed to pay for that if Mark didn't agree to pay Everything her back that you are week. saying would give her the right to sue Mark as well. That's what it that's does That's who she me. should be suing. Yeah, except for that we both know that's not going to happen. So the question only remains, is it so divorced from you that somehow you would not be responsible for it? 
when your contract calls for you to collect this from them, because that's the contract that you drafted with your French counterparts. Does it mean that you're so divorced from this whole thing that it has nothing to do with you, and then it's your name on the rental contract that you have conveniently not brought to court? All right, no. Uh, you don't get stress and aggravation. <laughs> Otherwise, I would be a very rich lady, okay? So I'm finding in your favor in the amount of $3,486.65, which is the money that you're actually out. Verdict for the plane. So the plaintiff prevails in this case, not to the tune of $10,000, but only in the amount she's out, some $3,400. Mr. Gardner, <laughs> sorry, but you're on the hook for this. So, so the judge says. It doesn't seem fair. You know, uh, she, she came out of her own. Uh, she, she solicited it, or she agreed to make that loan to Mark. It, I had nothing to do with it. I didn't ask her to make the loan payment for the, for the cars. Um, yeah, but the judge points out your name's on the contract. Your name's on the deal with her. The contract you know? is with Mark or TDA and the French group, not with uh, Teresa Brooks. So I don't agree with the judgment, but um, I'm happy that she will recover her money. Well, she get what, yeah. You know, you did a good thing, though. You, you, are you going to keep it up? Is it over? I'll Nothing? try to start it up again, and I'll, I'll be better the next time. Yeah, okay. Well, good luck with you. All right, it thank was a good you. idea. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry you lost so much money on it. All right, Ms. Brooks, you're going to get the money for the car, okay? Yes. He did a good thing. It was a good, did it work out well? The camp was wonderful. The, the, the kids loved it. Um, my son loved it. Uh, it was just unfortunate that I tried to be kind and um, kind of got stiffed in it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm sorry for you. It's okay. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank okay. You. Mm -hmm. you won your case. Okay, Harvey, what do you think? So short and sweet, Doug, uh, the defendant's on the hook because the defendant uh, has a contract signed by the defendant's agent, and that means he is stuck. And that will do it for this case, litigants, for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.